Just before I get into the meat of this video, I want to apologise for the sound quality on some of it. I hadn't realised until I came to edit it, there is an issue with my phone, which I do all my filming on, and the sound is intermittent on some of them. I'm sorry, I can't refilm these pieces because they are already done. Um, so you're just going to have to bear with the sound and I'm afraid turn it up and try and hear what you can. Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium uh, YouTube video. Today we're looking at these. These are flower meadows, but with the difference that they're using Marini to make, you know, together to make a larger flower rather than me making a kind of flower meadow with lots of small flowers. This is doing a kind of slightly more impactful project. And particularly what we're doing is we're using our landscape lines to create these sort of flowers, turn, cutting them into pieces, turning them lengthways on to create these kind of um, beautiful flowers and other effects. And I'm also showing you our new bugs, butterflies, bugs and little caterpillars and using them. And the plus point is, for you guys who use a vitrograph kiln, I'm going to show you how I made these little ones in this shape. And uh, so you guys with vitrograph kilns can have a go at stacking your pot like I do. So for this particular project, I'm going to show you a bit of my vitrograph knowledge. Now, I don't often share this, guys. Um, why I don't? Well, because I sell Marini for a business. And I think I'd be a poor businesswoman if I decided to sell or uh, give away my uh, tricks of how I make my Marini. Um, I'm very proprietary about my knowledge. I have spent a long time perfecting my techniques and um, I use them to sell. And, you know, the more and more of you guys out there are making Marini and good on you. You know, it's, we can all learn from each other. But I choose certain of my knowledges that I'm not willing to share and some I am. And today I've decided to share a bit. Um, so. This is about how to make different shapes with Marini, um, uh, in Marini. And how we do it sometimes is we do it like this. So we take a pot, we use terracotta pots. Um, if you're using stainless steel, you know, you, however you do it. And we drill a, a, with a diamond bit, core drill, we drill a hole in it. We use a bench press drill. Um, if you didn't have a bench press, you could use a hand drill. I use water, we definitely get them wet and then have to give them a really good clean afterwards because it does end up with quite a lot of terracotta kind of um, scars on them. So we give them a really good wash. Um, and after that, we're using silk mat. So this is, you know, fantastic silk mat. Love it to bits. Um, uh, and I use a double layer. So I have, um, you know, saturated it in the rigidizer and then cured it in an oven just to make it all nice and hard like this. And then really you can cut anything you want out of it. It's such great stuff, this silk mat. So effectively, I've we, this is silk mat we used to use for older pots. These are not the pots we used to, you'd normally use, unfortunately. The Italians have stopped making them. So we're now using these, um, which are slightly heftier and um, bigger. There's a spider in my pot. Okay, um, so this is why it's slightly not the right size, but we can use it anyway. So I would draw around the pot and I'll draw a hole in the middle um, the draw around the hole to get the shape I need. So effectively, that is what I'll be cutting. Now I want to think about this, the shape I want. Now I want a petal shape. So these are like our landscape lines. But if we curve the ends, we can make a petal. So I've sort of thought about it on here and sketched it out. And I'll have a quick go at sketching it out. And then I'll draw it on the um, silk mat. And for that, I'll just use a Sharpie because Sharpie works and draws quite well on the silk mat. And then, yeah, as you should know, silk mat is not... Um, is not bad for your lungs. You probably don't want to breathe a lot of dust in anyway, but you don't have to be quite so careful as you would if you were using um, some of the other kind of cutting board methods. And I'm cutting that out and then I'm checking it's fitting inside. Now I'm going to keep trimming it down until it fits snugly in the pot. And then after that, I'm thinking about the shape. Now, I want a sort of petal shape, like a daisy petal. So the end is going to be rounded and I need to make sure it fits in the, the, the um, diamond drill hole. And the size of this will depend on the size of the bottom of your kiln. If you have a hole in the bottom of your kiln only this big, there's no point in draw, drilling a hole this big in your pot. And um, you know, you don't ever want to go too big with your holes. That can cause all sorts of issues as well. Unless you're going to go with a giant pot. I have a, such a fantasy, a giant pot this big 
in a kiln this big. It would be quite a long pull though. Anyway, enough about my fantasies. Um, so yeah, you're drawing the shape out and then literally just cutting it. What you've got to remember is what you cut will translate into the glass. Any imperfections will show on the glass, will show in the, in, in the shape on the, the Marini. So you want to get it good. You know, if you do a funny old leaf shape, you're going to get a funny old leaf shape Marini. And we've had some funny old shaped Marini at times. Um, so, you know, cut it out really carefully, push it on through, and then you're going to want to give the inside a really good clean up. You want to get as rid of as many of these fibres as possible. Because any fibres left over will pull onto the glass and you can end up with silk matte fibres on the glass as you're pulling it. So just tidying it up nice and neatly. And then that's your hole. Right, you can see it's a pretty good leaf with petal shape. Now my idea is this is the bottom of the petal that goes into the centre and this is the top of the petal. Now I would say you wouldn't want to go much thinner than that, otherwise it's going to be very, very thin to pull. You want a bit of meat behind it, particularly if you want some petals. I could even go a bit thicker than that, but I'm going to pull kind of these slow and thick. And I'll even show some of the pulling tomorrow when we do it. I'll film a bit of that. So I'm going to trim this up and get this in the pot and then I'll show you how I'm going to load the pot. So now this is in the, um, in the, the pot and I've tilted it at an angle like so. And for, yes, there's a slight phallicness to this. I do perceive, but let's ignore that and move on. So I want to go from like dark to light. Now I've chosen a sort of plastic thing like this. That means I can put the pot in and tilt it at an angle. And then it means that I can start stacking glass in it in kind of layers I want. So I'm wanting to go from sort of darker to lighter colored um, sort of red. So I'm going to just start off with that the red glass I've got. In fact, I've got a nice big piece like that, and then I can stack behind that in dark red and that. Yeah, the marini at the bottom will not get this dark red in it, but further up will get it, and so it's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. That it will. Um, to start with, have kind of um, the dark red at the start won't show so much. So as you see, I'm just going to build it up in kind of layers. I want to put some red and then some orange. I'm going from a dark red to a, uh, a yellow at the top. So the pointy bit is the middle of the flower. That's the bit that goes into the centre of the flower, and that is the curved edge, which. Um, Will be it. This will also can double as a landscape line, um, which you'll see when I pull it tomorrow. So it can kind of be used as a dual purpose thing. And because you're loading it with scrap, it doesn't kind of, you know, it's not quite as expensive as loading it with kind of full glass. But we want to try and get a kind of little bit of contrast and interest going on in there. So when you cut it into a petal, um, you can see that too. And in a way, maybe loading some this way might be good too. So I might think about in a minute loading some in this way but i'm going to have a play and we'll see where we get to so here you can see i'm stacking the pot and i'm getting and i want to do these bits this way so i'm just slowly stacking them in i put a bit of glass at the bottom just to block the hole so they don't kind of fall through the hole as i'm stacking them in and i'm going to carry on going i'm going to put more dark red at the bottom once i've got it kind of once it's a do you got to, to a certain capacity you can turn it upright and sort of shove more bits in but I'm just waiting until I get to there before I start. So here you can see I've done a complete layer of um, this and now I'm going to literally fill the end of the pot with just bits of yellow. Um, so I'll fill that up with yellow and we can see how it is when it's done. So one thing you must remember is if your glass has this writing on you need to take it off and don't put it into the vitrograph can it won't burn off. I tend to just put some glass cleaner on it and let it sit for 10 minutes and then normally it can wipe away. And sometimes you need to do that twice to get rid of it if you do want to use a bit of glass with this on. See, after a few minutes, I managed to wipe most of it off. Still a couple of specks on it, but um, 
I'll be able to get those off if I put some more on. I don't worry about cleaning the rest of my glass, um, unless it's really heavily saturated with cutting oil, it can kind of all go in as it is. So here's the pot all ready to go in the kiln. Um, things you need to watch out for is height. You want to make sure that the glass isn't coming over the top of the edge of the pot, otherwise you may have problems getting it in your kiln. Um, we have done this, and I'll say that the glass is sometimes touched in the roof of our kilns, and um, we turn them on anyway, and it will slowly melt down and it doesn't seem to stick to the top of the kilns. But I wouldn't recognize, reckon, um, recommend it as a sort of good practice um, thing to do. Uh, not very good for your kiln, not very good for kind of uh, your, your, the you know, time it takes for the kiln to fire up because it's going to be letting heat out. And that means it's going to cost you more to fire your kiln. Um, so, yeah. Make sure you're not building your pots above the height of your kiln, uh, height of the um, the edge of the pot. Um, apart from that, you know, I've just added pieces in, and sort of it's quite an organic look. This one, it's not going to be a very kind of intricate design. But as you can see, you could use this method. I use this method. Um, I did some beautiful poppy landscapes in Marini, and this is the method I used for those. Just doing them at the angle and slowly putting the glass in. So I hope this can you some nice ideas. We're going to put this in and we can see how it pulls tomorrow. So normally you'll see a, a blob and unfortunately we didn't get to film it because we started pulling before. And then when you see that and you've got something to grab hold of, we use these needle point um, tweezers to pull. You can get up into there, get hold of the soft sort of plug of glass and start pulling down. And we're going to pull very slowly because we want quite thick rims okay. Now, if I can get Sandra to zoom in here, you'll see there's some contaminant on the first bit of the pool from the silk mat. That will quite often happen. You could sandblast that off or scrub that off if you want to use it. Um, this is sort of, you know, is an issue slightly with silk mat. You know, the better you clean the silk mat, the less of this you'll have. I actually forgot to clean mine, so this is why I've got more of this. But you will get some silk mat um, contaminant on the cane. Um, at times and she, she I, you know I do clean off before I use the cane and glass so you can see I'm pulling quite slowly I'm coming off the glass I find each different person in the studio has a different way of pulling there's some people who pull holding on there's some people who come off and for me you know I'm 40 well the wrong side of 40 towards 50 and to have my arms always up pulling would be too tiring so I literally pull a little bit and because I get tired, I then pull it thinner than I want. Now, I'm not getting a totally kind of uniform, you can see, because we, we started pulling and then we stopped. We've got a sort of bulge here. Um, but uh, you want to sort of pull enough so you're getting a sort of a, as much as possible a uniform width to the glass. Um, we pull different sizes. So with this, I'm going to pull you know, some thicker. Then I might want some smaller petals. So then I'm going to pull some thinner. Um, but for this first one, I'm going to pull it quite thick and quite chunky. So once I've pulled a bit, I'll get you to come back to me and we'll have a look at the, um, the cross section of it once it's cooled down enough to cut. So sometimes I might want to pull a bit thinner um, if I want some slightly smaller petals for kind of flowers that are um, smaller maybe in the background. Um, just pull a bit faster. Um, we also use the needle nose pliers with the uh, rubber band around it that kind of can hang off and almost pull on its own at times, um, makes it slightly easier and uh, just anything, we pull a lot, so anything to make it slightly less physical and easier, we're on our feet all day anyway. Um, it's physical work pulling cane, uh, it can be quite exhausting, particularly if you're doing stringers. So you know that literally I'm just keeping an eye on it and it's happily pulling on its own at the thickness I want. If I want to go a bit thinner, I can pull a bit pull a bit on it. If I want it to slow down, I can put a finger underneath and just slow it down and it will thicken up a bit. Um, when you've got the weight of the glass as well as the weight of the pliers, it's going to pull thinner. It's always going to pull thicker at the beginning to thinner at the end. So it's just worth um, taking that into consideration. And that will happen. They will thermal shock off when you touch them. Some quite often they'll do that. So it's just not panicking. And um, I've stack some against the wall over here upright it sort of helps with the thermal shocking or you know sometimes I'll lie them down we use ceramic tiles to um, 
just protect all the area and make it all nice and kind of safe for us and means that we can put the hot glass down and it doesn't matter. Um, so that's kind of that. Once this is cooled we can cut some petals and have a look at them. So now here's the pull. I've cut it up and I've processed it um, and just having a look now we can look at the cross section inside of the pull. Um, so this sort of stacking I did in the middle with the kind of pieces of orange going lengthways. You can't really see it in this because it's a sort of long, thin, skinny pull. So perhaps I could have done slightly less and just stuck a load of yellow at the top and a load of red at the bottom and get this variegated, um, this variegated sort of uh, marini because they're fantastic now you cut them on lengthwise. They're sort of looking like this and um, they are really useful to use in projects if you do sort of floral stuff. Um, the only thing about the silk mat to note is you will get some areas of it feeling quite rough. I, you've got to be a bit careful because there are little, little tiny um, like uh, glass sort of um, bits sticking up and if I push my finger along it to the wrong way they are going to catch into my finger. I am... Um, Normally when I get a piece like this, I will take a cloth and give it a really good rub to try and loosen up and make sure there aren't any shards that can get me after that. Um, you could give it a sandblast as well. Uh, you don't really want the silk mat in your projects, so you've got to be careful on the bits where the silk mat has, for want of a better word, contaminated the pool. Um, I still find it really good, a really good product, but th this is a small issue with it. You will get small amounts of contaminant from the silk mat and I've you know cleaned my silk mat up as much as I can and it still will a little bit on the out no, never on the inside I've never had any problem just a little bit on the outside and as I say rubbing it briskly with a cloth seems to get rid of most of it. So after the firing you can see that the piece of silk mat is perfectly okay to be reused again it's kind of hard it's a little bit soft around the edges but and you won't get infinite firings out of it but it will absolutely hold up for quite a number of firings. The other great thing about it is I want to do a slightly different shape for the next pool. So I've on the back cut a little, um, drawn a line and I'm going to cut this out and give myself a slightly different shape for next time, which is a great way of reusing it if you're kind of, you know, constrained about how much salt mat you want to spend money on. Now I'm going to cut this. The other great thing about silk mat is it doesn't, um, it's not carcinogenic. So even after it's fired, the dust isn't terrible for us. I am going to put a mask on anyway because I don't want to get dust in my lungs. But it's not as terrible as a lot of the other products, products out there that we use in glass um, making. So I'm going to go ahead, put a mask on, recut the shape, hoover up all the dust, and then I can put it in my pot and put it at an angle again. And I'm going to stack another pot Give me another kind of um, fun shape to use and then I'm going to show you how to use them in the project. So here's this one pool. It's quite a small pool. I didn't put very much in it, um, but it's quite nice to petals. It's more the shape I'm showing you. So as, after we recut the, the um, silk mat, I've now ended up with this shape, which is really lovely for petals. Then um, I've gone with the slightly weird colours, um, a bit of uh, blue, so I'm getting a bit of reaction and these orangey colours. Problem is when you put blue in with orange, you inevitably end up with something that looks a bit like brown. Um, it's something to watch out for. Um, but I still think it's quite pretty and I think they'll be useful to use in projects. Um, so that's what they look like. So I've cut two pieces of three mil tector to quite a large size that you just want to cut it to whatever size you want to make your piece. I decided to make quite a, a big piece and I wanted to make a, a portrait piece this time with lots of flowers kind of coming up. Um, up here so I need to do uh, the first layer is going to just have um, glass powders on to give it colour as you can see you've got two layers one layer behind has the, the the glass powder on it and then the layer on top has all the marini on it so I will change my masks over making sure you're wearing a proper dust mask to do your glass powders So I'm going to use um, Spring Green Opal 126 uh, at the bottom. 
Now, when doing kind of colours like this, you sort of want to go two thirds. So you want to go two thirds land or two thirds sky. Um, I think I'm going to go two thirds sky. I'm going to sort of maybe draw a bit of sort of land coming up around and not make it totally. It's very important to make sure your sieve is empty before you go on to the next colour. Now I'm using light cyan. Light cyan will react with green opal. So I want to be a bit careful about not having too much. I don't mind if there's a little bit of reaction. I quite like that in the landscape. It sort of adds something. You need to do quite a thick layer of this. I'm sorry if you're hearing Alexa in the background. She's having a moment. Quite a thick layer of this powder. Um, to make sure that you get a good colour saturation. If you go too thin, you're not going to get good colour saturation. You're also going to be careful because we don't want to get air bubbles coming between these two layers and then you know getting trapped air causing difficulties in the piece. So that's my kind of layer of light cyan. Gonna make sure that's cleaned out. I've got some pea pod green here. I'm gonna add that to the bottom. And that's not reactive, so I can kind of go along the skyline and not worry and just add a bit of the contrast. You can't really see the difference in colour here, but there is a bit. It's a sort of more muted spring green. That's people. And then I've got some periwinkle. And periwinkle also is not reactive. And I like to go with my periwinkle kind of up at the top of the sky. Um, it's sort of this beautiful purpley colour. It's, it's, it's been said the poor man's purple. It's much cheaper than purple colours. It doesn't have gold in it. And then last of all, obviously my light adventurine green. And just a dusting here and there. Just to add a bit of sparkle. So that's done. Um, and this can go in the kiln. So once this is in the kiln, I don't know why I've left the... I'm going to get you to follow me around. I'm going to put this piece in the kiln. I'm going to put the two pieces of fibre paper where my hooks are going to go. And then I'm going to put my hooks on, ready for the next layer to go on top. So that's all nice and ready for the next layer to go on top. This is making sure that my hooks are nicely, evenly lined up so they're kind of equidistant on both sides. I think this one's a little bit... Okay, so I'm just going to take my this mask and swap back over and we can start thinking about the next layer. I'm going to quickly clear up first. So here's a piece, the second piece of glass which will go on top. Um, so now I haven't really, you know, um, sketched this out or anything. It, you know, I don't tend to. I think, you know, depending on how you work, you may want to get a pen and go, okay, I'm going to put some, um, you know, echinacea style flowers up here. I'm going to put some of these like here, but I tend to sort of just, um, let it evolve as I as I do it, and and sometimes that works, and maybe sometimes it doesn't work. So I'm going to start. You know, I I sort of I really want to use these echinacea flower centres with these orange petals that I specifically made, thinking about them. You know, on this piece I cut the orange petals out of two mil glass, so I'd quite like to give it a go um, with using these sort of petals I made out of the silk mat and scrap. Now sometimes again. Cutting them, they can end up being a bit thick. You can just cut a bit off and um, put them down. I would say using a bit of glue is going to help you get your pieces into the place you want them. And the only problem is then it's harder to move them around if you go, oh, I don't actually like them like that. But I sort of want these at the top of the picture, looking up towards the sun. You can always, if you sort of want to get another piece in there and not, you can sort of cut a petal with a bit of a triangle on it. 
to then fit in like like that at an angle which can work quite well um and uh then you know i'm gonna you know go on and do another few of these up here and then work out what we're gonna put where else so here it is um finished um we've gone really impactful we've gone as many flowers as i can fit and i wanted this really lush garden um, I saw these um, when I was in Africa so many years ago. Um, I don't even know what they're called, but I was like, oh, I want to build one of those with these. It really kind of it, um, lends itself to this. And just, I think these are really versatile, these cut-up um, landscape lines. I really like the way they work together and um, have really been enjoying making these pieces over the last few weeks with them and um, all these other pieces you make. And you can sort of see, you know, just, you're never going to get the same type um, in, in each different pool but they're so great and versatile and um really kind of you know add something to your your design now to finish this piece off i wanted to introduce our newest designs which are our to add to our ladybirds and bumblebees we and we already have butterfly wings but now we've got four butterflies and these um red and orange and green ones these sort of um neo pink ones um, we've also got really cool caterpillars. My kids are so in love with these caterpillars, and as am I, they are just great caterpillars. And then some really lovely, fantastic bugs, um, which are super cool as well. So I'm just going to finish off by putting some butterflies, definitely some caterpillars climbing up, um, the stems here and there. Uh, um, all over here just to sort of finish it off and you know some bugs down the bottom and these um, new ones they are sold in mixed sizes well like our sheep you can buy um, a loss of 25 grams or um, 25 grams or one ounce in different sizes and mix sizes so then you get a kind of range of different sizes and i think particularly we do projects with kids i mean my kids are like when can we come and do a project with the caterpillars and bugs and stuff they just thought they were fantastic so i look forward to having a play around with them quite soon um and i can put some bumblebees on as well because you know what's a garden without bumblebees we all need to support support our bumblebees and a few little ladybirds as well um, and then this can go in the kiln and it will go on a nice light tack fuse to be um, keep as much texture as possible. Um, it's going to have a longer nail, guys. It's got quite a lot of layers, particularly around here. Um, and uh, we can have a look at how it is when it comes out with all these cool things. So for you know anyone who's doing kind of lovely um, things with gardens and... Uh, projects like this panels for people who love you know floral designs and flowers i think these are this is a really kind of useful way to get a lot of impact using kind of quite cheap marini or a quite, quite cheap way to make a marini and making a fantastic panel because apart from the fused flower centers that we sell the rest of it is pretty kind of um your sort of cheapest value marini you can get um so i hope you've enjoyed um this and we'll put it in the kiln see how it is when it comes out um, if you've got any questions on how to make these, they're literally just layering up the the um, the uh, marini kind of the strips, um, uh, or just putting them together um, around a kind of flower. The only thing you need to be a bit aware of is that because they're quite straight, they can if they get sort of hugged together, they look a bit funny. So it's just nice to get a bit of spacing and gaps between. Them. And apart from this, none of this is really kind of, you know, proper, you know, flowers out there. I haven't so I said I am making a dandelion or I'm making a, I sort of more like, fan, you know, I prefer my fantasy gardens with lots of colours and flowers and now bugs too. All right, let's put it again in the kiln and we can see how it is when it comes out.
So here it is out of the kiln. Um, I think it's great. I really love the textural feel of this piece. You do have to do a longer nails on this, guys. It's a three hour nail because it's got lots and lots of different levels um, and layers. Um, I just love the way you can use these landscape lines to create all these different types of flowers. And even the second kind of petals, which we did with the silk mat, um, to create these kind of echinacea flowers at the top with our flower centre, Marini. Um, I really think this is a sort of fantastic project and a really lovely way of making other flowers which are more kind of up close rather than the kind of traditional flower meadows we will be making with lots of little flowers. It's quite nice to see something which is more um, bold and impactful with this sort of big um, lush feel. I particularly also love all our, our bugs we've made. Look at that caterpillar, it's so cute! Um, and we've got the bugs which look great, and our traditional bumblebees that have been around for a while, and these new butterflies look fantastic as well. Look at that little caterpillar on the leaf there. It really just brings the whole piece to life, adding the bugs. So I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video and you found it useful. I really look forward to seeing what all you vitrograph users out there do with now you've got the silk mat tip and you can try and make some shapes of your own. And if you've liked this video, please subscribe.